Just what is it that you want to do? Well, we want to be free. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. And we want to get loaded. And we want to have a good time. And that's what we're going to do. Yes. My cup of tea. Uh, oh, that's better. Right. I've been talking about doing a polishing tutorial uh, for a wee while now. And uh, as luck would have it, I received a couple of mods today in the post that uh, are in need of some polishing. Um, one brass and one stainless steel. Now, uh, before we get started in this, there'll be a lot of editing going on later on and I'll try and make us, this as short and as condensed as possible for me uh, and get as much information in as I can key things you have to remember before you start any kind of polishing you have to know what you're working with um, is it stainless steel is it copper is it brass is it plated is it painted if the device you're going to be wanting to polish is painted or plated then it's a whole different ball game uh, your plating or your painting or paint on a mod is only microns thick. Uh, I mean, it really is thin. So if you go in at it with a hard abrasive polish uh, or try sanding it, then you're going to end up taking it down to, you'll just eat right through that plating and go down to whatever is underneath the plating or paint. So as far as chrome plated, uh, or painted uh, metal. I would just clean it with a cloth. Uh, I would take a duster to it and that's all I would do. I wouldn't take anything abrasive to it at all. Uh, you might get away with it one or two times, but after that, you're going to end up making a right mess. Uh, so, but that's one of the drawbacks of plated stuff. Um, as far as it goes with stainless steel, aluminium, and brass and copper, you know, that's the base metal, you know, that's going to be the metal all the way through the mod. So you can sand it down because you're not taking any paint or anything off. You're not affecting that. So that's the good thing. Uh, right. What do you need? Okay. It depends how far you want to take this. If all you want to do is give something a polish, a clean, then you can go with Brasso for anything brass or copper, anything like that. Brasso is just the ticket, uh, easy to use. And if you're going for stainless steel, then I've been using this stuff for years. That's why I bucket buy it by the big huge tin. Um, uh, Autosol, you'll also get Auto Gleam, Glim, uh, there's there's lots of metal polishes out there. The thing is that these metal polishes, uh, any metal polish really, uh, it's a paste, but the paste contains tiny little bits of grit, if you like. It is an abrasive. That's how it gets rid of uh, scratches and things like that. It's an abrasive. It's actually, you know, if you think of your, that's your your surface of your, your mod, not a good example. Uh, and as you're polishing it, you're smoothing it out as well. That's how you're getting rid of the scratches. Um, so that's that's what I use. I use Autogleam and Autogleam, Autosol, and I use Brasso as well. Uh, if you're just going to go down that road, I would, you know, there's nothing to it. You put a wee dab in a cloth and you just polish away. That's it. Uh, and then you buff it off. Get yourself some microfiber cloths. Uh, things like this. Uh, a microfiber cloth. Uh, you can actually, if you use the wrong cloths, you can make the finish worse on your mod than before you started because you could be scratching it. Uh, microfiber cloths are a godsend because they tend to pick 
the rubbish up and it gets tucked away into the cloth rather than lying on the surface of the cloth and so when you're passing it over your mod the dirt that you're picking up you're actually scratching the surface of your mod with it so good microfiber cloths and it doesn't it really helps if you clean them every once in a while uh, <laughs> I used to I used to have a car detailing uh, sideline, a business, uh, where I did paint restoration. So I had like hundreds of these cloths and polishing gear and whatnot. Uh, so I never bothered cleaning them, they just got thrown in the corner and left. And every once a few months I'd clean them out. Uh, now I seem to be down to three or four. Anyway, rambling again. Um, so, if you're just wanting to polish, just give a clean to a stainless steel surface. Stop. Right, here's what we'll do. There's three, three stages here. You can use polishing paste, like I've just shown you. You can use a machine, an electrical tool, like a Dremel, uh, you can get a Dremel or a, an electrical rotary tool and put polishing uh, tools on the end and then polish things up that way. It's a lot faster. Uh, you can also use, like in the background there, uh, that thing is an angle grinder, but it's got a polishing head on it. Uh, and that's what I use. It's a lot faster and get a lot better finish. The main times that I use that though is I use the electrical poly polishing tools after I've used sandpaper. And this is the big thing, sandpaper. If you get a mod, <clears throat> especially stainless steel, that has scratches in it, machine marks in it, uh, and the finish really isn't that great, then what you have to do is get yourself some sandpaper. Now, you get wet and dry, wet and dry sandpaper for stainless steel, that's the best thing. And effectively what you do is you are... Is there any way I can show you this to describe it better? Got it. Uh, find a bit of wood. Right. There's a bit of wood here, okay? Let's just say for an example here that that is actually, we'll just say that's stainless steel, okay? Now, over time, excuse me while I get my big knife out, yeah? Over time through use, it's going to get scratches like that on it. Uh, and, you know, that's going to happen with stainless steel as well. You're going to get scratches. Um, it's unavoidable. So what you do is you get sandpaper. Now, those scratches have gone down into the metal, shall we say. Um, and what you do is you get sandpaper and you're going to basically flatten out the metal until it's the same depth as the scratches. So you're polishing them out. You're, you're actually reducing the level of the stainless steel, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's how you get rid of the scratches. You use sandpaper to reduce the metal. Does that make sense? I wish I still had all my. I used to. I used to do uh, some training uh, on paint correction, and I had to be graphs and charts and things like that. But they're all gone. Um, so you're flattening out your, the surface of the metal. Uh, now, sandpaper comes in different grades of strength, if you like. The the lower the grade, so let's say fifty. 
uh, or you get number 50, number 100, number 125, number 200. The lower the number, the heavier the grit is. So if you have 50 grit and you go over a metal surface, it's going to go through that surface really quickly. Whereas if you have, say, a 1,000 grit, it's going to take you a lot longer to get the same effect. So ideally what you're trying to do is you have your piece of metal and it has scratches in it. You want to get down to the level of the scratches and smooth it out. Now if you go too hard with 50 grit, you can go right down and you know make a mess. And then you're going to have to spend a lot of time smoothing it out with a higher grade of sandpaper. It'll make sense in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but that's 10 minutes of waffling and we'll, we'll stop there and we'll get some visual stuff. Okay, this is a Sturm V2 mod that I received today. And it, it looks perfectly okay. Uh, not a problem there with it at all. But uh, if I take this one just to the side, just now, and on my microfiber cloth here, I've got some auto sol metal polish. Now, I've possibly got a bit too much here, so I'll just wipe that off. Less is actually better. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just quickly get coverage on the bit of metal first. Try and wipe off a bit of excess if I can. And then I'm just working it in the direction of the mod. Uh, you know, I'm just working it up and down. If you work it like that, then you're effectively you're going to end up with swirl marks in the metal. So you're always better going up and down. Or if you have machining marks on it, do it in the direction of the machining marks. You can see there that it's starting to take some dirt out of there. Uh, and really, you, you know, I'm just going to do this very, very quickly. Uh, and you'll notice that I'm wearing gloves, uh, latex gloves here. I strongly advise that you get them. Because when you start polishing stuff, it is messy. Uh, Right, that's just me giving a couple of passes in this. So I'll just wipe that polish off. Now, I always recommend that you have a polishing cloth. You get your excess off with it, but it's still going to seem kind of cloudy. Um, even a bit of uh, toilet paper or tissue paper uh, or have a cloth uh, in reserve that you use for finishing your last polish off. I uh, strongly advise that you do that. Uh, you should have a cloth kept to the side that you only use for taking the final buff up. Right. So that's that. And there. Now, It's got a wee bit of a better shine to it. Not great, not fantastic. Uh, I've not actually done it that well because I've still got bits of polish there. But you know, I could work that for five minutes and it would come up a lot better because remember, it is an abrasive. Okay? Right, once again, we'll take this bit to the side. And what I've got here now is my trusty old Dremel, which has seen better days. And there's a little polishing head on it just now. Uh, oh, excuse me a second. You know, I've actually got a stack of these like polishing tools here, uh, which I would use for cleaning these kind of things up if I want to get into the nooks and crannies. But for your, you know, your average person at home that you know doesn't have an angle grinder, these things are fantastic. Um, you can get blocks, you get paste that you would put onto 
your compound, uh, not to your polishing mop. You hear it called polishing mop, uh, polishing heads. You get a compound that you put on it uh, that can you get different grades of compound, which is abrasive. But if you're just at home, there is nothing wrong with using just a little bit of, uh, you know, your autosol. Um, what I tend to do is just get my autosol, spread it over the, the area I'm going to be polishing. Not too thick. This isn't easy doing this on camera, guys, I'll tell you. Um, right, this is going to get loud. Right, let's give this a muff off. So there's your difference in finish now. It's getting there. Now, you notice I'm only doing this very quickly. I'm not, you know, uh, spending a lot of time in this. If I was to invest 15 minutes in doing that properly, this would come up like a mirror. It really would come up like a mirror. Uh, the key thing is keep the mop, keep the mop head moving. Don't dwell on one spot. Um, just keep it moving and keep working that compound in. Um, if the compound dries out and you haven't got the finish you want, put more compound on and then get back to it. But, uh, you know, if you feel it getting really hot, stop. Uh, you don't want it getting hot. Uh, that's, not, <laughs> that's not the best thing. Uh, it means you're working it too hard. Uh, so, you stop there. So, there we go. That's just using a, a Dremel. I mean, you can pick up these Dremel tools or look alike Dremel type things for a tenner. Uh, and they are great things to have in your toolkit. The wee polishing kits you can pick up dirt cheap on eBay and places like that. Okay, that's that. Right, I have purposely <laughs> just scratched up the surface of this mod here. And you can see it looks okay from there. But if you catch it in the right light, you can see that it's all scratched. This is what I was trying to explain with a bit of wood, which I was explaining badly. Now, you get wet and dry sandpaper. And it comes in different grades. Now, I've got the uh, P600 here. And I've got P1200 as well. And I've got loads of other stuff, but it's all in the house right now. Uh, and you might not be able to see it there. See the colour difference? Well, the P600, this one, has a lot more grit in it. And this one does not. It's not nearly as abrasive. So really what you're trying to do is gauge how far you have to sand this down to get rid of these scratch marks. Now, when we used to do it with uh, car paint, you always started off with the, the least abrasive 
tool uh, and work away with that. And I would still suggest that start with the least abrasive uh, paper until you see how far you have to go down. You will learn over time that you can start off with, say, if I look at this, I think, well, I'm probably going to start off with P600 because I don't think the scratches are that deep. Uh, so I won't have to work at it that long and that hard. Uh, so I can just use something which isn't that abrasive, which is a bit of P600. Now, I would always advise that uh, you leave your wet and dry paper in a tub, a small tub of lukewarm soapy water for about an hour before you start. Uh, it just helps uh, and it makes it, it actually makes it easier to work with. Um, and you always want to keep your sandpaper, your wet and dry sandpaper, you want to keep it nice and wet when you're working on the surface because this aids, uh, you know, Oh, pardon me, this aids the, the sanding. Um, so, uh, just to, I'm just going to tear a wee bit off here. And I've just got a little bit of water here. But normally I would soak this for a good long hour beforehand. And just taking this paper and working it in the one direction. Now it's going to look like you're actually doing more damage than anything else. It, if everything's working right, it should go cloudy. Uh, And what I'll do is just give this a quick wipe. And hopefully you can see there that this has gone cloudy. Now there's the shiny side. And there it is, it's gone cloudy. Now looking at that closely, I can see that I've actually, I've taken out the scratches. So I'm quite happy with that, uh, that the scratches are gone. And that'll, that only took two minutes. Uh, but I, I hadn't scratched up badly or anything like that. Now, I could go and polish this up now and get quite a nice finish on it, but if I take a little bit more time and go to a higher grade of paper, so P1200, which is a lot less abrasive, I can sand this again and make it silky, silky smooth. And the smoother you get it, the deeper the shine you're going to get once you polish it up. Uh, and this is what really makes the difference when you're finishing stuff off, uh, is, is getting that deep, glossy shine. So I'm just going to work this for a couple of minutes. Well, maybe not even that long. I know there's probably experts that are going to be watching this going, but what about this, but what about that? Uh, well, you experts should know just as well as everybody that, uh, you know, you can take this to a certain level for your average person at home. Uh, you can go in-depth. Uh, I'm not going in-depth here to any great degree. Uh, this, for me, is as much as I want to talk about it, uh, and hopefully people can... You know, this, these are the basics, very basic stuff. Uh, and there you can see the finish I've got. Now, what I could do is get a little bit of my auto saw again and start polishing this for all I'm worth.
But I can tell you, hand on heart, that this is going to take a long, long time to get the finish that I want. You know, it'll actually stay cloudy for quite some time. Uh, I'm going to have to keep working at it and working at it with Autoglim, Autosol. Uh, so the easiest way is, if you've got one of these, noisy, noisy time. Tell you what, I'll buff this away for a couple of minutes and uh, we'll show you what it comes out like. Right, after a little bit of, uh, well, five, ten minutes of buffing away, uh, hopefully you can see the difference in the finish there. This bit here, now I would want to work that a bit more with the uh, You see that you can actually see me in this one, almost. But you can't see anything, no reflection in this one at all. But I would work this one some more, uh, and it would be a mirror finish by the time, you know, being done with it. Um, you've got to remember, they become fingerprint magnets once you've done that. Uh, they really do. There's. And this is the, the brass mod that I got. Now, I had to work this a wee bit longer because there was some, well, brass, by its very nature, you know, it ages, if you like. So it becomes, this is, uh, you can see this is tarnished and, you know, it doesn't look that great. It's got a few scratches on it. Um, so, once again, I've taken the sand, some sandpaper to this and sanded it down just to get rid of the scratches. One side you can see that I've got a reflection there, another one I haven't. Um, now, let's move the camera. Right. Um, look at that. Polished and unpolished. Some people actually prefer the tarnished looking uh, brass. Uh, but for me, brass just looks stunning once it's polished up. Um, right. The key things to remember here are never go in too hard straight away. So never use grade 50 wet and dry sandpaper uh, straight away. Uh, always use the least abrasive, abrasive method to start off with. So for polishing, just use Autosol or uh, Brasso or, or whatever, uh, whatever metal polish you can come across. Um, you get things like the Cape Cod cloths, which are basically just cloths soaked with a bit of Brasso. Uh, and you just wipe the surface and uh, it brings them up lovely. Um, Polishing things with Dremels and sandpaper, that, that's not polishing, that's rectifying the surface. You're taking scratches out, um, uh, hazing, uh, you're, you're trying to make a mirror finish on the mod. Um, let's say the drawbacks to that is you end up with a fingerprint magnet. Um, but it is relatively easy to do with a bit of practice. Uh, you know, get yourself a wee bit of metal and practice on that first. Try the sandpaper out. You know, I've got a bit of uh, stainless steel there that I've got cut. Uh, I was going to build something with it. Uh, I would recommend something like that. You know, get that, uh, scratch it up a bit, and then get some bits of sandpaper and practice getting scratches out. Don't go straight in at the mod. That's your pride and joy. You, you, you just don't want to damage that. Uh, most things can be fixed, uh, but practice first. That would be my advice. Uh, you also get things like, uh, I mean, that's all I can really think of for a very high level look at polishing and uh, sand, sanding stuff down. Uh, 
I could talk about this for hours and hours and hours and hours and just bore you to death. And but there are in-depth tutorials on the internet that you will find about doing this kind of thing. What grades of sandpaper you should use in what order, uh, what compounds you should use um, for your buffers, um, you know things like that. Um, like I was using uh, on on this thing. I was using metal polish. Uh, you do get bars or paste that you can put on that has more grit in it. So it actually it works faster uh, at you know bringing up. It's almost like using sandpaper. So you can use in different grades of compound on these things. You can you know work really quickly in polishing up a mod. Uh, right. Disclaimer, practice. You have to practice on things. If you do anything that I've shown here on your mod straight away without practicing, more fool you. Don't rush into anything. Uh, you can also get brushed finishes on your mods. And you get things like by using that wet and dry sandpaper, if you get like say the a thousand or twelve hundred, you can spin it round and get like a brushed satin effect. I'm not going to do that just now. I've covered enough for today. Uh, I'm going to have to go and polish up the rest of these mods. Uh, but uh, or using steel wool. Steel wool is another good thing for getting the the brushed effect. But once again, if you're going to go down that road practice first do not go into attacking your mod practice 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 uh right i'm going to finish off doing what i was doing and uh with any luck this has been kind of helpful i hope so any questions fire away as always guys cheers now bye